In a world before fingerprinting and DNA analysis, identifying criminals was often more guesswork than science. Enter Alphonse Bertillon, a 19th century French police officer who revolutionized crime solving with his meticulous methods. Known as the father of modern criminal identification, Bertillon introduced the world to a system so innovative, it set the stage for forensic science as we know it today. His contributions weren't just groundbreaking, they were borderline obsessive in the best way possible. Alphonse Bertillon was born in Paris in 1853 into a family of academics. His father, Louis Adolphe Bertillon, was a noted statistician, and Alphonse inherited his fascination with measurement and detail. However, young Bertillon's academic career was unremarkable. He had a knack for failing to live up to the towering expectations of his scholarly family. After bouncing from one unsuccessful job to another, Bertillon eventually joined the Paris police force in 1879 as a lowly clerk tasked with recording mundane details about criminal suspects. Bertillon's anthropometry system was built on the idea that every individual's physical measurements are unique and remain constant over time. He developed a meticulous process to record 11 key measurements, including the length of the head, width of the forehead, and arm span. These measurements were combined with detailed descriptions of scars, tattoos, and other distinguishing features. The process wasn't quick or easy. Suspects had to stand still while their measurements were taken with calipers and rulers. If they fidgeted, Bertillon probably gave them the kind of glare that only a frustrated perfectionist could muster. But for the first time, law enforcement had a reliable way to distinguish between individuals. Bertillon's method, known as the Bertillon system or Bertillonage, became the standard for criminal identification in Europe and beyond. Bertillon even had a flair for the dramatic when introducing his method. In one demonstration, he proved to an audience of skeptics that his system could differentiate between two men who looked like identical twins. The applause might as well have been a standing ovation for science itself. Anthropometry wasn't Bertillon's only contribution to modern policing. He also pioneered the standardized mugshot, a now ubiquitous tool in law enforcement. Before Bertillon, photographs of suspects were haphazard, with inconsistent lighting and angles that made it hard to identify anyone. Bertillon introduced the idea of photographing suspects from the front and side under consistent conditions. In other words, he made sure criminals got their first taste of camera-ready lighting. This simple but ingenious innovation made it easier to catalog and compare images, ensuring that police could accurately identify individuals from their records. Bertillon's mugshot process was so effective that it's still used today, albeit with much better cameras and, hopefully, fewer suspects smirking at the lens. Bertillon's obsessive attention to detail extended to crime scenes as well. He was among the first to use photography to document evidence, ensuring that crime scenes were preserved for analysis long after they had been cleared. His methods were methodical and precise, emphasizing the importance of preserving the integrity of evidence. Imagine Bertillon pacing around a crime scene with a camera, barking at officers to stay out of the frame. Beyond photography, Bertillon also devised a method of organizing crime scene details into meticulous records. These files, complete with diagrams and photographs, helped investigators see patterns across crimes. While his tools were simple by today's standards across crimes, while his tools were simple by today's standards, the principles of careful documentation, Bertillon's methods gained international recognition during the 1894 trial of Captain Alfred Dreyfus, a French officer falsely accused of treason. Bertillon was called as an expert witness to analyze handwriting evidence, attempting to link Dreyfus to the incriminating documents. Unfortunately, Bertillon's testimony relied on convoluted theories and questionable conclusions. It's fair to say that the Dreyfus affair was not his finest hour. While his analysis ultimately proved flawed, the trial brought Bertillon's work into the global spotlight. The controversy didn't entirely tarnish his reputation. Instead, it sparked debates about the reliability of forensic science and the importance of rigor in criminal investigations. It also underscored the dangers of overconfidence in unproven methods, a lesson that continues to resonate in forensic science today. Bertillon's anthropometric system was groundbreaking, but it wasn't without its limitations. Measurements could be difficult to replicate precisely, and errors were not uncommon. By the early 20th century, fingerprinting began to surpass anthropometry as the preferred method of identification. Fingerprints were not only unique, but also easier to collect and compare. At first, Bertillon resisted the shift to fingerprinting, viewing it as a threat to his legacy. You can almost imagine him muttering, calipers never let me down, under his breath. But eventually, even he had to acknowledge its superiority. Fingerprinting was faster, more reliable, and required less equipment. While Bertillonish faded into obscurity, his broader contributions to forensic science ensured that his name remained synonymous with innovation in policing. Interestingly, Bertillon's resistance to fingerprinting highlights the difficulty of adapting to new ideas, even for a trailblazer. It's a reminder that even the most brilliant minds can be slow to embrace change when it challenges their life's work. Bertillon's meticulousness, often bordered on obsessive, 
but it also led to moments of unintended humor. For instance, he once proposed measuring the angle of the ear as a way to identify suspects. While it's unclear how often this method was actually used, it's fun to imagine a detective holding a protractor to someone's head and saying, ah, yes, 45 degrees, we've got our guy. His dedication to precision occasionally exasperated his colleagues, who sometimes found his methods overly complicated. But Bertillon's stubbornness was part of his genius. He believed that science and measurement could bring order to the chaos of crime, and he wasn't afraid to think outside the box, or in his case, outside the calipers. One of Bertillon's quirks was his insistence on cataloging not just criminals but also objects and evidence with the same level of detail. From stray cigarette butts to footprints in the mud, everything had a place in his files. His belief in no detail too small often led to fascinating insights and a few chuckles from skeptical colleagues. Alphonse Bertillon's work laid the foundation for modern forensic science. His emphasis on standardization, meticulous documentation, and the scientific approach to criminal identification transformed law enforcement. Even though his anthropometric system was eventually replaced, his methods paved the way for advancements like fingerprinting, DNA analysis, and modern crime scene investigation. Bertillon's legacy can also be seen in the way police work evolved to embrace technology and data. His belief in the power of measurement and observation remains a cornerstone of forensic science. From the standardized mugshot to crime scene photography, his influence is still felt in police departments around the world. His contributions weren't limited to France. Bertillon's methods were adopted internationally, inspiring law enforcement agencies in the United States, Britain, and beyond. His ideas even influenced fictional detectives like Sherlock Holmes, whose keen eye for detail echoes Bertillon's approach to observation and deduction. While Bertillonage is no longer used, its principles remain embedded in modern forensic practices. The standardization he championed paved the way for databases like AFIS, Automated Fingerprint Identification System, and TOTUS, Combined DNA Index System. Bertillon's dream of using science to fight crime lives on in every police lab and forensic investigation today. Moreover, Bertillon's work highlights the trial and error nature of innovation. Not every idea he proposed was perfect, and some, like his handwriting analysis during the Dreyfus Affair, were outright flawed. But his willingness to experiment and refine his methods set a precedent for continuous improvement in forensic science. He also paved the way for forensic psychology by demonstrating how observation and systematic thinking could solve cases. His early efforts inspired later scientists to blend human behavior with empirical methods, shaping the multidisciplinary field of criminology. Alphonse Bertillon's name may not be as well known as some of his successors, but his impact on law enforcement is undeniable. By introducing science and precision to the art of criminal investigation, he revolutionized the way police work was conducted. His story is a reminder that even flawed pioneers can lay the groundwork for breakthroughs that change the world. The next time you see a mugshot or hear about forensic evidence solving a crime, Think of Alphonse Bertillon, the man who turned measurement into a tool of justice and paved the way for modern criminal identification. And if anyone asks why police take mugshots from two angles, just tell them, it's because Bertillon had a thing for symmetry in solving crime, one angle at a time. If you enjoyed this story, give it a like, leave a comment, and hit the bell so you don't miss what's coming next.